zoom. Oh, it does zoom. this manner of life with the words of affirmation and instruction and his presence and first marriage at a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Christian marriage signifies to us the beauty and mystery of the union that Christ has with his church. And the scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife and heart today and of body and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy for the health and the comfort given each other in all seasons and conditions in life. And when God so provides for the procreation of children and their nurture and training in the knowledge and love of God and Christ. Christian marriage is therefore great significance. It is not to be entered into with haste or lack of careful thought or prayer, but reverently, deliberately, and in careful accord with the purposes for which it is intended. I would now ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? I did. That's the her mother. <laughs> we first need to declare our intention today. And so, Josh, I would ask you, will you take Amanda to be your wife? Will you now promise, in the presence of God and before these gathered witnesses, to be a loving, faithful, and loyal husband to her, whatever may come, until God shall separate you by death? If so, answer, I will. I will. And Amanda, will you take Josh to be your husband? Will you now promise, in the presence of God and before these gathered witnesses, to be a loving, faithful, and loyal wife to him? Whatever may come, until God shall separate you by death. If so, it is will. I want to say today that it has been a privilege as your pastor to lead you through the pre-marriage process. I want to commend you for taking the time <coughs> and the effort and the deliberate nature that it requires to go through this process. I want to thank you for your participation in multiple pre-marriage counseling sessions. 
for your honesty and openness, for your acceptance of the things you learned about yourselves and each other, and the principles upon which we build our future lives, and you together in your marriage. You've been dating now for over two years. You come from unique backgrounds and life experiences. Amanda, this for you is a new beginning. Aren't you glad God is a God of new beginnings? Thank the Lord for paying for that. And Josh, this is a brand new experience for you. Coming by faith into this relationship and into this new beginning for your life as well. And in this unique situation, we do not just have a wedding today of two people and just a marriage to celebrate, as wonderful as those things are. We celebrate a family today. We have a very important third person in this union. And we are very excited about that in just a few moments. We'll acknowledge that in a special way. I want to remind you of the principles that we talked about that the scripture gives us in Ephesians chapter 5, the marriage chapter. The principles that if you build your lives on, no matter what may happen, you will stand the test of time. Your marriage will survive. <laughs> you, aren't you glad to have somebody up there here? <laughs> the rest of your life now. Amen. <laughs> uh, these principles will, will stand you strong and it will hold you strong through the test of time. Regardless of what life throws at you, regardless of what you know, surprises you will encounter. And you will have surprises. Some that will be very joyous. Some that will be painful. There's not a one of us in this room that has been married any length of time and had a family that has not had some deep, deep, heavy moments to go through, as well as some great moments of celebration. These are the principles that will serve you well in those times, especially when your relationship is tested. The first one is the principle of agape love. Kind of love that Jesus introduced to his disciples and to his world when he was here on earth two millennia ago. He used the word agape as a new word for love because it was a concept that was really foreign to his culture and it still is to ours. The word agape in the original Greek means that I put you before myself, that I willingly put your interest before my own. That literally, as Jesus defined it, as defined by the Apostle Paul, we lay our lives down, we give ourselves up for someone else. That's the kind of love that Jesus modeled for us. And what a week and weekend to be getting married. When you think of the symbolism of being married the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the day that Christ was buried and dead, actually buried yesterday, but he was in that tomb. He was gone. They thought it was over. We find out tomorrow morning that was not the case, and he's alive and well. But he sacrificed himself. He gave himself up. He laid himself down. This is the very definition, the embodiment of what agape love means. And it's the very love that you are called to love each other with in the scripture repeatedly, and that you specifically are So I challenge you to build as the primary piece of your foundation, mutual and not pay love, as only Christ can enable you to do in your life and the years ahead. The second principle that's in that passage is mutual submission. Uh, as we talked about, submission is not something I can force someone else to do or someone else can force me to do. Submission is my choice. It's my voluntary choice to this be submissive to the other person. And as we talked about it, Ephesians 5.21, you are instructed to be submissive to each other. And specifically, you, Amanda, are instructed to be submissive to Josh and the rest of that passage. So mutual submission, mutually choosing to put the other person's need before your own, mutually choosing to lower yourself and elevate the other person. What a principle to build. talked about the fact that the greatest need of every man, Amanda, is to be respected. Not only have psychologists told us that, scripture tells us that, Ephesians 5 tells us that. It 
instructs wives to respect their husbands. We also talked about the fact that you've got to earn that respect, John. That it is a deep, deep need in the man. And I trust you will always make it your intentionality to trust and respect your husband. And we talked about the fact the greatest need of every woman, Josh, is to be cherished. And while that word is not used in Ephesians 5, all the definitions of it are. You care for her as you care for yourself. Feed and clothe her as you feed and clothe yourself. Those are expressions of love. That's what cherishing is. Expressing love. Putting it into action. And I challenge you to spend your life cherishing her. Christ must be the center of your individual hearts and lives. You can't ever take that for granted. You can't ever just assume that. That's a focus. That's an on-purpose intentionality in your lives. And I challenge you to do that. And keep Christ number if that's the case, he will then be Lord of your marriage and Lord of your family. And when he's Lord of your marriage and Lord of your family, as well as Lord of your life, keep him the center. And I challenge you to keep him there the rest of your days. Never let anyone or anything come between you and Jesus. And as you do that, keep the church a high priority. You have found in this body of believers found a group of people that love you. You found a place to serve, and a place to grow, and a place to thrive spiritually. May the church always be a high priority. You've got a pastor and a staff and a lot of people who care about your life, and we're here for you. Those are building blocks. You've got a great beginning. You've got everything in place. You've made the right commitments. You've gone through the right process. I have no question that if all that stays in place, God bless you today. We congratulate you. We're excited about sharing this moment with you, all of us that are here. And we are praying God's blessing. We have some questions to ask today to your parents and families. Curtis, <clears throat> John, and Trina, and Terry, and Debbie, do you give your blessing to Amanda and Josh? and promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage as they attempt to carry out these principles? Amen. Will you, if so, respond together by repeating these words after me? Josh and Amanda, Josh and Amanda. we rejoice in your union. We rejoice in your union. And pray God's blessing. And pray God's blessing. And friends and family of Josh and Amanda, you come to witness these exchange of vows. Will you do everything in your power as you are able to, to support this marriage now and in the years to come? If so, answer, we will. We will. We will. We will. One. Well, it's time to exchange the vows now. <coughs> and if the two of you will turn to face each other, take each other's hands good time to look into each other's eyes. <laughs> These are words that have become not just standard routines to these two, but they have personalized these. So there may be some phrases you haven't heard before in the wedding ceremony, it's a wonderful thing. So uh, we're going to lead them through this process now. First, from Josh. Amanda Lynn, I love you. And I know this love is from God. I know this love is from God. Because of this, because of this, I want to be your husband. I want to be your husband. So we can serve Christ together. So we can serve Christ together. Through all of the uncertainties, through all of the uncertainties, and trials of the present and future, and trials of the present and future, I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. And to love you. I will love you constantly. I will love you constantly. And with the deepest loyalty. And with the deepest loyalty. I promise to guide and protect you. I promise to guide and protect you. As Christ does his church. As Christ does his church. As long as we both shall live. 